you want to come in? Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a while since I've filmed, mostly because we're grieving, but we have a new addition to the family who just coughed up in front of you. His name's Cal. Yes. <laughs> he drank water too fast. I want to show you just how grateful I am for all of your condolences and sympathy cards because we lost spot. Uh, here are all the cards and I really appreciate every single one of them. This is the first year I think that we've had condolence cards next to Christmas cards. So just wanna say thank you. Let's get to the video. Today's episode is about minimalism and pets. This is our new dog, Cal. He's a five year old golden retriever mixed with a lab and he's basically the star of the show. All right, let's get to it. So dressing for the winter is a whole other issue as northerners feel. I usually wear four layers, underwear, long underwear, pair of jogging pants and maybe even like winterized like splash pants like this weather um you know if it's raining I, my clothes don't get wet so you saw what i wore earlier so i'm just gonna dress like as if i'm dressing for to take cal out long sleeves then my sherpa line coat now i wear this a lot in the house and this is always in the washer and dryer the reason why is we just adopted him and we're teaching him boundaries. So he's not allowed to go certain places and we have a pool and when you winterize a pool, you retract the cover and just put a tarp on it. And I wasn't certain that the pool had frozen through. So he's actually not allowed in the backyard. Guess what? We, we've let him in the backyard. And he's so smart, he figured out, oh, um, I can just walk across the pool because it's frozen. I, that dog, he's very smart. Okay, so this is a Sherpa lined uh, flannel shirt. And then I highly recommend getting a parka. This is about 17 years old. It's from a brand called Wind River and it's, it's Canadian. And I've had it since I was maybe in undergrad. So, the reason why you need a parka is multiple pockets. So this pocket has Kleenex, this pocket has poop bags, this pocket has T-R-E-A-T-S, I have to spell because he's right here. And walking is a really good way to train your dog. It's a good meditation for you and it sort of bonds you to your dog because you're out there for a mile and a half, might as well teach him things. He's so smart, he learned how to give paw in one walk, so he's a good boy. Additionally, there's a cell phone pocket right here, and it has a hood. So this is what I look like to take Cal out for a walk. So a big part of having an animal is the amount of fur that is on your clothes. So this is from filming earlier today and there's the culprit right there, okay? And what I'm gonna do is show you the different methods that we're thinking of, of using. So here's the zero waste approach. Uh, this has a piece of velvet on it and can you see? Not that great, right? That's the zero waste approach. And then there are these, you can buy these at Costco. And guess what? Not really a whole lot better. There's still fur all over this. So the only thing I suggest is just have a separate change of clothes, like actually differentiate between clothes you wear to work and clothes that you sleep in because you do not want to be sleeping in all this much fur versus clothes that your okay with dog fur gets on it. Now, 
One last thing about dog fur, you have to find the right deferring tool. For us, it seems to be the Furminator, and this is how good it is. We actually saved all his fur so we can throw it in the backyard for the birds, because birds use it for her nests. And that is how much fur we got from Cal. Most of it seems to be on our clothes, so. Here are your two options, the zero waste method and this, and they both work out equally. You just have to do several passes each time. Our mudroom is now basically dog essentials. We are no longer a priority in the house. It's all about him. We are keeping his weight down simply because I have experience with Labradors and they tend to get chunky really quick, kind of like their owner. So we are supplementing his food with a lot of treats because he's new to our family. He has a lot to learn. He has zero manners, however he's learning. So we give him a lot of treats. I recommend having two food bowls and here's why. When you rescue a dog, there's a good chance that they could have problems that they don't disclose by the rescue agency. Worms, parasites, ear infections, all kinds of things that they don't tell you. Additionally, it's really stressful for a dog to be rehomed and this is going to be gross but going to the bathroom is not fun for you or him because you have to pick up and he's having the runs. So there's a powder that you sprinkle on their food and it makes a mess of their food bowl. So while this is in the dishwasher, I alternate with another. Another thing is um, my dog tends to be especially slobbery. So I have to make a mental effort. Remember to clean his water bowl because they develop a slime on the water bowl and that can cause all kinds of issues you don't need. He gets walked four times a day for a total of six miles. The first walk is done at seven in the morning and there's a good chance that the sun hasn't risen yet. So you don't know where the ice is. So I bought a very inexpensive pair. Stop biting. Ah, no bite. Uh, a very inexpensive pair of boots. And the way I make it safe is with a product called Stable, S-T-A-B-I-L, and it's made in the U.S. and it has spikes on it. So here's what they look like. Now, this is not going anywhere. The boots themselves were only $14, which tells you like they're not great on ice. They're perfectly good for warmth because it's also Sherpa line. However, it's downright dangerous on ice and so once I put these stables on them, they're not leaving. So that's a commitment. My all around go-to boot are these. These are North Face. And I don't know if you can appreciate the sole. The soles are reasonably good for most conditions. However, they're not that great on ice. If you want to see a winter boot review, I did a really good one recently. These are from Bass Pro Shops and it's so old and so worn that you can barely see the treads on these, but I wear them for warmth and ease, meaning there's no laces, it's just a quick zip and off you go. And it's great for warmth. Today's episode should be called Pets and Minimalism, but I already made that video. So I'm calling this Minimalist Shopping Regrets. In front of me are a bunch of leashes. This is the leash that Cal came home with from the shelter. So as with, that's him, that's not me. As with most new additions to the family, you end up buying a lot of things just to get you through the, that first few weeks, in our case, 35 days. So here's what we bought. We bought a leash made by Calm. The problem is it's only three feet. Next, we went to the cobbler and uh, he's great. I think his name is Tony and he's an Iraqi cobbler and God bless him because Cal chewed through this very expensive $40 leash. Here's my complaint about this. It's a flexi leash. I call it the lazy man's leash because 
when you first get your animal, you are responsible for bathroom breaks. And sometimes you're lazy and you're in your pajamas and you don't feel like getting dressed to walk a mile and a half to make sure that they relieve themselves. So you walk out in your pajamas and bedroom slippers with the flexi leash, stand in your garage or your front door and let them go potty. Well, look how thin this tape is. It's so thin that one bite and Cal managed to chew through this leash and the tailor fixed it. Now, this is about 15 or 20 years old and I can't find it but I want to repair it. Yes, Cal, we see you. Because... Seriously? The extendable leash. I do not recommend this leash for training or walking the dog. It's just, it's so thin. Like they used to make really good quality extendable leashes and they don't anymore. And this was expensive. This is a flexi leash and it used to be made with such good quality that a dog just couldn't bite through them. Now this had to be repaired as well. So instead of it being 42 feet, it's whatever Cal ate <laughs> subtracted from 42 feet. Why do I have it? Because at night we don't want him going outside uh, to relieve himself without supervision. So I just stand in the doorstep in my pajamas and he can go as far as 42 feet and I still have control over him. Now, he came from the shelter with this. And I highly recommend that when you rescue a dog, keep the leash that he came from the shelter just for like 48 hours. And it's not very long. It's just long enough for the shelter of volunteers and staff to introduce me to Cal, Cal to me, and take him from his kennel to the trunk of our car. And of course, he's eaten through that as well. The reason why I recommend you keep this is for the sake of familiarity. And when they first enter your house, they have a natural tendency to go everywhere. And we've made the executive decision as a family that Cal is not allowed on two floors, the upstairs and the basement. And so far, he's respecting it with the help of three months of a baby gate. Next, this is another three foot long leash. We were desperate after he'd eaten through all his leashes and we found that Kong made a product. The problem is it's only three feet long. The nice thing is it's comfy. Final leash is this chain one. The reason why we kept this chain one from our previous dogs is we tend to get Labrador mixes, like lab mixed with Pitbull, lab mixed with a golden retriever, and they're water dogs, and I don't want leather leashes getting wet, so that's why we have a metal chain. And that is our list of leashes. I know, there's nothing minimal about what I showed you. Next, we have toys. We don't really know about toys. You'd think, okay, well, they need a ball. You need a ball? Okay, go get your ball. Go take it. You think, okay, they need a ball. They do, but there are other toys like this. This is called Go, G-O-U-G-H, Nuts, N-U-T-S dot com. Here. You don't want it? You just want to disrupt my video. And with Cal, because of the history of abuse, because of a history of abuse, Cal was especially needy and difficult. And we could not even sit on the sofa and watch a Netflix show for weeks. And the solution is a puzzle toy. The thing is, Cal has completely destroyed this one. And so, what we have to do is three months later, buy him a new Kong puzzle toy. So the way it works is it has a spinny part and what? And a part where you put treats. So I'm just gonna give this to him so he leaves me alone and I'll put treats in it and I'll get some footage of him playing with it. An aggressive chewer like labs, and I've had pit bulls and I've had labs. I've had pit bulls. <laughs> 
you're impossible. So because Cal's an aggressive chewer, as you can see, half this toy is missing. These only last three months. Cal actually passed his 90 day period with us. So just mentally prepare that buy inexpensive toys for them like tennis balls. Buy a chuck it. It comes with a wand that you launch the ball with. Um, we thought that he was going to be a baller. Turned out we were wrong. It's just all about affection and food. That's it. But just mentally be prepared that these are quite expensive and a good one will last an aggressive chewer three months. So you can see Cal in the corner and he's enjoying his puzzle toy. The reason why you need a puzzle toy is because he just needs to be occupied so he can leave us alone. Now our house always looks like this. It looks like a bus station at uh, rush hour. So all our couches are covered with, I don't want to call them a slip cover, but you can move them and throw them in the washer. So the next one is beds. Mentally be prepared to have at least two beds. We used to have more because we used to allow our last dog spot upstairs in our bedroom, but we drew boundaries this time. This is our last dog. We want him to enjoy life as much as possible, and we want to enjoy our own lives as much as possible. So he has a bed right there in the corner, and he has a bed in his crate over here. Now this is a massive crate. I got this from one of the women I worked with when I first got married and it housed three Cocker Spaniels. And on top of his bed is a cot. And I use the cot for training purposes because someday I'd like to invite guests over to the house. The doorbell rings, you invite your guest in and say, hi, nice to see you, welcome. And the whole time your dog is to the place command and your guests feel comfortable coming in, saying hello, not being afraid of the dog, and that's what that is for. I do not recommend that particular brand, but the nice thing is Chewy not only appreciated my review, but they refunded me the money. I'm gonna keep it because in the summertime, I'd like to teach Cal to behave himself around the pool and to have manners. And that takes obviously hours. And I don't want him lying on the grass where he can pick up fleas and bugs and bring them into the house. So I hope this was helpful. And I hope you learned a little bit about our new addition to the family. And if you have any suggestions for how I can be more minimal with a pet, I'd love to hear it. So don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. You like your toy? Yeah?